Hi, this is Jamie Imani and welcome to Emotional Awareness. So for today's episode, I'll be answering a question that came in about how to rebuild trust. So here we go. My husband and I have been married for almost 13 years and about nine months ago I found that he had an affair with his co-worker for 18 months. I believe they are no longer together but this has left me shattered. I can't believe he did this to us because he has been a very caring and loving husband for all these years. He says he's very sorry and I believe him and I do love him very much but everybody tells me that I should leave and I would like to try and make it work but how can I trust him again? So first of all I would really like to respect your decision for wanting to try because nowadays there's a lot of shame in not leaving. So obviously before women couldn't leave because of financial reasons or societal reasons and now that we can there's almost a lot of pressure to leave and so if you're saying that you want to try and stay and make it work then I respect your decision to do so. Okay so secondly how do you trust him again? It's definitely too early to trust him because you really don't know if he's going to do it again and it hasn't been long enough and there isn't enough proof or evidence to say that he's not going to do it again and so you are in a sort of uncertain vulnerable stage of your marriage right now and you should be cautious it's actually the most appropriate and natural response to what happened and it will take a lot of time to sort of earn the trust back. But one thing that he can do to regain your trust is that he has to be willing to listen to you talk about how this whole experience was very painful for you, which is going to be very difficult for him because being hurt is very painful, but what is even more painful is causing hurt or pain to the person that we love and watching them suffer because of our mistakes. And so if you are the perpetrator, you're probably going to feel a lot of shame and shame is I am bad, I am worthy. And shame Shame can sort of feel very self-absorbed and it's sort of me, me, me. And what happens is that you feel so bad about yourself that you can't even see how you cause pain to somebody else. So the person that got hurt, they need to be acknowledged for their experience. They need you to realize that you caused them pain. And if you're sort of talking about your own trauma and that's why you did it, then you end up causing even more pain to them. And so, you know, it's obviously hurt people that hurt people. But if you are the one that caused pain, then you cannot expect empathy the from the one that you cause pain to and you want to go and take that to a therapist or you know your friend or somewhere else so as the perpetrator it's your responsibility to sit there and listen to how your action caused pain to someone else and that's really the price that you have to pay for the mistake that you made which is very hard but that's what begins the healing so like I said before shame can really prevent you from doing that so instead of feeling shame what you want to feel is guilt and guilt is I did something bad not I am bad like shame but I did something bad and so guilt comes with accountability and it comes with the responsibility so the other thing that you really could do you know as somebody who caused pain to somebody else is that you could be proactive and volunteer to bring it up yourself so you could go and ask your wife and say oh you know how are you feeling how are you doing I know that experience was really horrible for you how are you managing it now and so what that does to your wife would be that it shows number one that you care and secondly it frees her from bringing it up you know and the other thing I'd like to say is that you don't have to trust somebody a hundred percent to be with them and um, you could break up the trust and you know trust this person for that thing and that person for this thing we don't trust anybody a hundred percent and that's the way it is and it sounds like you know your wife or you know, whoever's watching this has done that already you're saying that you trust them as a father but you don't trust him in other ways and so throughout history there's been many functional relationships where they didn't trust their other partners hundred percent. Okay, so I have another video called How to Build Trust. I'll link that above and it's, it's sort of step-by-step -step process and it's inspired by John Gutman. I would definitely like to check that out. The other resource that I'd like you to check out is by Esther Perel on audible.com. The episode is called The Addict and it's a very similar story where it's about a couple who's been married for 40 years and they're in their 60s and their husband is a sex addict and the Esther Perel sort of goes through the process of showing them how to sort of rebuild or begin to rebuild their trust between them. Okay, so in a nutshell, trust is going to take a very long time to build but you guys have a much better chance if he takes full responsibility, accountability of his actions and he's willing to sort of listen to you talk about how much pain he caused you regardless of how painful it is for him. So that's it for today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.